I think one of the things I'm happiest about is the voice recordings, and then they put it back up on the website. I know. And so, like, if you miss something, like, you just go. I'm going to try to get that done regularly. Well, Thank you. I don't know why it's not showing up. You probably have it on one of your sheets that starts before the year 46. Don't know why this one's sticking where it is. But we talk, we got up to, um, yeah, there we go. But before that, okay. Herod had met Mark Antony. That's Rome and, and Judea. Antipater, his father, was ingratiating himself to Rome by fighting Rome's battles for them. It's, a, it's two columns. You move over to the other side. Antipater's made a, a Roman, Roman citizen, which makes Herod, his son, a Roman citizen. He's given a title. They're also giving titles to the priestly family. And then by 47, Herod is appointed governor of Galilee. And he puts down a revolt. Galilee is, of course, the area up around the Sea of Galilee. Um, you probably know this, but to avoid being confused, usually if a person just says Herod, they're talking about the first one, Herod the Great. At various times, coins show that some of his sons would use Herod kind of as a title and some wouldn't. Some historians don't use Herod with like Herod Agrippa, but if you just say Herod, usually you're talking about Herod the Great. <coughs> However, when you move into like uh, Acts or, or even the end of the Gospels, it just says Herod. You're supposed to know the other Herod's already dead and that this would be his son. So we'll, we'll cover that as we go through the text. And next week, I hope we're going to be getting into the text. Okay. So now, we have him, he, he's, a, he's important now. Please go forward. And there for our online student. Here we go. Hey. I didn't look it up. It's been a while since I read the book. But there is action taken against Herod. The Romans want to keep everything in line. So he's appointed in Galilee, but Jerusalem is the center of this area. And um, so maybe things don't start off perfect. Then I, I mentioned the different people he marries because that becomes important in, his, um, in the succession to his throne. So how is that only Jerusalem? What's that? I'm, I'm sorry, Judea. Jerusalem is in Judea. Yeah. Same. And it's a bigger center. Uh, by, by the time of the adulthood of Jesus, Judea is the Jewish capital. Yeah. And Caesarea is the Roman capital of the same area. So um, he gets, maybe it was, I'll have to look it up. Maybe it was the, um, the Jewish authorities, but they didn't have... The Jewish authorities would not challenge the Roman authorities. So that, that, I'll have to look that up for you. So his first wife is Doris. This Col Syria is a name that was sometimes used in antiquity for what we might generally call the Middle East, from Syria down through Judea. So the larger area, they, they, changed, the, um, they changed the borders frequently. But... Um, he gets another appointment as, as governor. And every time they change administration, just like in the United States, then all the underlings can be changed. So that's what we're keeping up here. All right, he goes and he helps the troops of Caesar. Uh, a Jewish embassy goes to Caesar and tries to get a little bit more independence for them. Uh, there's all this interaction. So what is it? A couple of years into his marriage, his first son, Antipas, is, uh, is born. They had the nasty habit that we do of naming people after their grandfathers or fathers. That gets very confusing. It does. <laughs> so this Antipater is the son of Herod. What was the name of the father of Herod? Antipater. There you go. Oh yeah, I was about to ask about that. I was like, wait, uh, are we the same people? Or yeah, not? yeah, I know. Just backwards? All right. <laughs> so father and son. Later, both I'm going to write that down. Yeah, on both ends, on both sides. Antipater. Antipater. All right. You know where you are in history when you read about uh, the, the assassination of Julius Caesar, uh, all these turnovers. And then Antipater is poisoned. I only point that out because 
that kind of thing is going to start happening more. It's a little murky why or who, but then a new Roman official reappoints Herod to be uh, the governor of whole Syria, which would be Syria down to Judea. Now, the big change comes at the end of this chart on 42, when he decides to get rid of a wife because it's not convenient, and it would be to his advantage to marry into the royal family, priestly family. Just curious, all right, you told us yesterday, but it never really grasped the concept of it. What are the points of the R's and the J's again? Well, R is Rome and J yeah. is Judea. Yeah, like and we're to see how enmeshed was Judea with Rome. So if it affects Rome, it would have an R on it. If it yeah. J, it would have... And, and if it oh, has okay. both. And we're, you don't have to really keep up with the whole Roman history, but we're looking for when they interact. Yeah. Remember the name of that biography was Herod, King of the Jews and Friend of the Romans? Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Because... In one sense, you have the Jews who are looking for their identity in their king, the king of Judea, the king of the Jews. And by the way, Jew is the term properly when it's only Judea. And it, it really rarely occurs in the Old Testament. It's just at the end they're called Jews. But anyway, that, that's their identity. But it, it's a farce because really Rome is in charge and everybody's the puppet of Rome. That's just the bigger picture. So he marries a princess in the royal family, and the royal family and the priesthood is just all enmeshed too. <coughs> all right, just to keep it moving, Herod's still fighting battles with the Romans. And you know, at this time, that's the way you did. Remember, kingdoms were very small. Empires were big, but kingdoms were small. And if you volunteered to go help the empire fight the battles, you were on their good side. Now, something went wrong because sometime that year, uh, somebody was trying to get rid of Herod and Mark Antony stood up for him. So he didn't get thrown out. Then Herod and his brother, and I spell it different ways through here, Basil, something like that. They're both appointed now tetrarchs. The titles just, just float. Sort of like Putin. Is he the president or is he the head of the party or the, you know, premier? And I get confused on those things. Now, there is a revolt in Jerusalem. It's not that significant in the year 40 against uh, the Herod's, Herod and his brother. But by the, uh, later that year, uh, the brother of Herod commits suicide. So you've had a priest that's poisoned. Uh, a government official who's committed suicide uh, and the priest because there was a battle with a nearby country was taken captive and was disfigured and if you remember your Old Testament laws you can't be the priest if you're disfigured you can't be the, and so right so you know they did that for a purpose so there, there's tensions going on but notice uh, after uh, Faisal commits suicide well, obviously, the tables are against the Herod family. And so he escapes. You probably studied Masada uh, from like AD 70 when the Jews escaped to Masada and they ended up on the top of the Great Hill and they finally just died there rather than give in. Did you go up to Masada when you were over there? No. It, it's a big hike, I hear. I know. <laughs> That's why you can go. <laughs> but um, so then he goes down to Alexandria, Egypt. Then he goes to Rhodes, which is an island. Why does it all? Turkey, and then he goes to Rome. This is his first trip to Rome. He's been making friends with the big Romans when they were in the area. But now, when he feels like things aren't safe back home, he flees to Rome for refuge. And that's where all the power is. He was shrewd, nothing, nothing dumb about. I mean, he's eventually going to be crazy, but he's not dumb. So, guess what? Within a year, he's been named the king of Judea, Galilee, and Perea by the very Senate of Rome. That's a big appointment. Um, Perea is the uh, east side of the Jordan where John the Baptist was. And in fact, um, Herod, I believe it's Antipas, yes, Herod Antipas has a... Uh, they found his tomb there very recently. 
And that's where his, one of his palaces is where he kept John the Baptist in prison. That's Perea. So we'll have that work next time. And then you see they added uh, some of his uh, ancestral territory of his ancestors, Idumea. And I'm assuming that Samaritus is what we call Samaria. So he's getting more and more territory. He, uh, if you move on down, he takes Sepphoris and some other areas. Sepphoris would have been near Nazareth where Jesus lived. And let's see if we can go down another one. Yep. Now, he's been on the outs with Jerusalem, you'll remember. Do you know what a siege is in wartime? Isn't that where you like, kind of like just destroy the city? Not quite. Uh, okay. I mean, you do, but it's not real quick. You surround the city so nobody can come in and nobody can go out. Mm-hmm. And if you can cut off their water supply, they're, they're going to die pretty soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they had a special one. You probably saw Hezekiah's tunnel. Uh, there, there was a special uh, waterworks in Jerusalem, but eventually, you know, right. it's not a really fertile area. Uh, and uh, you depend on the outside for all your supplies. So they lay siege on it. And then he marries Mary Amni in the area of Samaria. And finally, in that year, this is a couple of years after the Romans said he was in charge, now he really is in charge of Jerusalem. You familiar with the term the Sanhedrin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the religious council that decided all things Jewish? Mm-hmm. Well, he got rid of the people there that he didn't like. Uh, incidentally, his brother-in-law was named governor of part of the area, the south. He has another child in 36, but this is going to create tension in his family. All of this is about compare worldly politics and, and kingship to the real one in the Bible. That's what we're struggling with here. So anyway, now he has a second son. Normally the first son would be most prominent. This one is, by his mother's side, a member of the royal family. And Herod was named by the Romans as king, but now he's gaining legitimacy in the eyes of the Jewish people who for 150 years had thought of the Hasmoneans as king because, you know, that's the way they all intermarry. You know, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen of England are, what, like second cousins mm-hmm. or something? I don't know. They're both descendants of Queen Victoria. Uh, that's the way royalty used to work. Uh, you intermarry. So this was a political move that he made. And now he's having two sons, not very far apart, Alexander and Aristobulus. Uh, you'll be glad to know that on his mother's side, uh, he had uncles who were named Aristobulus, who come into the story. So then Stobulus is his son's name and an uncle? Yes, his brother Herod's brother-in-law. Okay, they name Herod's son after his brother-in-law. Herod names his son after his brother-in-law. Now, this Aristobulus the third, if you'll notice, had been appointed high priest. Just so happens he was like 16 years old, but he was in the right family. And we will take time when we look at some of the um, archaeology books. But you can go to Jericho today and you can see where Herod's swimming pool was. Well, Aristobulus was playing in the swimming pool not very long after he became high priest. And he drowned. Lo and behold, isn't that sad? Or did somebody drown him? That's not, people don't even much worry about that anymore. Uh, If you'll notice, um, did we skip over it? No, we're not there yet. So he drowns at Herod's house in the swimming pool because now you're beginning to see the paranoia of Herod. This is a threat. His wife's family got him in, but if they have descendants, then they might have a claim to the throne. So kill him off at 16, maybe they won't have children. No one has proven. Who would put him on trial? All right, then you get another high priest, and then... Herod had a sister named Salome. She married Joseph. I don't know what Joseph did to bother Herod, but he had him executed. 
<laughs> Evidently, I'm not the first one no. to question the drowning of 16-year-old Aristobulus III, the high priest, because Mark Antony calls him up to um, what we call Turkey to say, they explain to me about, you know, right after we appointed this kid to be high priest, he drowned at your house. <laughs> Wait, I have a quick question. Who's mm -hmm. Mark Antony again? Mark Antony is the close associate of Caesar, but involved probably in the assassination of Caesar, and then he's part of the triumvirate of three that took over after Caesar as Caesar. Oh. But he also was a good friend of Herod from before he was like... So he's high up in the room. As high as he can be. He's one of the three, it's almost like three Caesars at the same time. Mm -hmm. But that leads to a big war. And it, Not um, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, then... I just thought it was interesting uh, that Cleopatra, the Cleopatra, visited Jerusalem to kind of put your history together here. Hmm. Do you know that Cleopatra was not Egyptian? Of course. She was Greek. Her family took over in the time of Alexander the Great. And by this time it was the descendants of Ptolemy, but it was a Greek family that took over. And so, the great Cleopatra wasn't even Egyptian. I mean, she looked like it in the movie, I know, but... <laughs> then, there is uh, tension between the two remaining Caesars. Octavian, Octavius Caesar, and Mark Antony. Well, Herod supports his friend which was a mistake, because his friend loses. But Herod will have no trouble switching sides after his friend loses. His yeah. friend loses and dies. Doesn't he die, uh, kills himself when Cleopatra lets a, a snake kill her or something? Wait, like do. Antony and Cleopatra. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah. It's in the movie with Elizabeth Taylor. I don't watch it. <laughs> right, but... We might need to have to watch this movie to build We're gonna have to. Uh, no, that That, and, and, and you've got to see Charlton Heston as Moses, or you're not American. <laughs> well. So, now this is two columns, so try not to get confused. Down the left column, uh, there's another high priest. He's executed. No surprise. Now, Octavian, who is the sole Caesar now, he confirms Herod is king of Judea. They go up to Rhodes, an island between Greece and Turkey. And now, somehow, he's ingratiated himself to the guy that he opposed when there was tension between the two Caesars. Uh, he entertains him at Ptolemaeus. Uh, he participates in their wars. He has different cities added to his, king, to his territory. Then you move over here to, um, it's not showing up good on my screen, but in the farthest back 20s, a little bit after 30. He is suspicious of his wife. So what do you do if you're suspicious of your wife that you she might be a threat her. to your you mother? Let's yeah. kill her. You better You get another wife. Yeah, I don't know who the sons of Baba are, but he's, he's killing people right and left. Now, if you move down, I highlighted the games in Jerusalem for a reason. Remember, he's king of the Jews. A lot of the focus of the Apocrypha is on the Orthodox Jews challenging the Westernization, or in history we say the Hellenization, of their culture. When Alexander the Great came, they brought in Hellenistic culture, which uh, included. Are you all taking Greek yet? No, 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 I'm so excited this for This is my first Bible class here. Oh, I think you should take Greek. I don't know why. why. I'm doing Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> why? I'm not going to speak it anyway. You don't well, have I to speak, speak it, it, but it's writing it so you can it's read not, it directly nice from it. the scripts. Yeah, the original oh, manuscripts of the scripture. Am I going to get a book with those manuscripts or something? They actually have pulled down in these classes sometimes Codex Vaticanus, which is about 325 A.D., uh, the oldest full copy of the scriptures, and they read it right from the original text. Well, see, that I didn't know. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, that means I'm going to have another headache. Yes. <laughs> well, now I often drink every other year. Next year will be Hebrew. Um, I want to quit. You, 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 you don't want to take both. You don't want to take both. You don't want to take both. It depends on your degree. I want to take both. Hebrew, I'm taking the biblical text. So I have to take both. I'm taking both. Anyway, all that was to say. Do you know what the first Greek word is in the word gymnasium? Gym. Gymnos. Do you know what gymnos means? <laughs> gymnos. It means naked. Oh, okay. And the nasium is the, you know, the facility. Mm -hmm. And it was just called the naked place. You know? wow. Because I guess anytime you work out or, or play ball, you're naked, right? Sure. I mean, I wrestled, so I wore Speedo. No, no, that okay. <laughs> no, you don't get to do that. that again. <laughs> well, naked or speed Now you remember. Oh. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I asked for this. Awesome. I know. I know. <laughs> Moving on. Oh. My voice recording too. <laughs> it really, it really does get kind of embarrassing, but we'll act like we're grown up. Wow. Um, there's actually a. a in one of the books of Maccabees, they're outraged at the practice. I know this is embarrassing, but the thing is, think for a moment about some of the most um, traditional Arab societies where the women wear the hijabs and all, and how much they hate Western culture as being terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, in a sense, the, Jew, the traditional Jewish people were, were equally uh, concerned about modesty. Mm -hmm. And this idea that people run around playing naked is just offensive. But as the decades and even centuries passed and that became the way, people wanted to be like the world. So many Jewish men were participating in the gymnasiums. That was the center of, of culture. But there's a big divide between those who would let people do that and those who wouldn't. There was a particular problem for Jewish men in the gymnasium. Do you have any idea what would be peculiar about men at the gymnasium? Hmm. They are circumcised, and no, not. the Greeks considered that an abuse of the body. You know, they really were into the body. They, all their statues look like me. You know. <laughs> no comment. They were actually having what in the day was considered medical procedures to undo their circumcisions so they would look like the other guys at the gym. They're adding back on. How? How, oh, yeah. I can show you a picture. It has to do with screens and pictures. I don't want the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the picture. <laughs> this might be some research later. Okay. No, that, that's not. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I think I'll just leave it up time. If you get away from the embarrassing part for a minute. How could it be embarrassing when this is done still today? Well, and, and some people it's a big deal whether it is or not. I mean, I, I don't mean to belittle it by saying big no. deal. It matters to some people. And the thing was, to the Jews, God said the mark of a Jewish man is his circumcision. Mm -hmm. You tell a, an observant Jew that they're not going to have a wrist for their new son, that they're not going to circumcise their baby, and you will be out of the picture. Mm -hmm. This. So imagine, I mean, it's like there telling your great grandmother that you're going to live with your girlfriend, not get married. You know, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to fly. No. <laughs> and and to say that I want to undo what marks me as, as a Jew, the, the most yeah. private thing that that marks me as a Jew, that was offensive. So when then Herod is hosting the games, the Olympic games. In Jerusalem, they got to swallow hard and say, mm, "He's king of the Jews. Uh, can we let him do that?" Um, you see, in antiquity, sometimes the uh, the high officials did things that were embarrassing to the people, uh, and that ended in what year? Move on down. He marries another one. Marries another one. I can't figure <laughs> out. He may, uh, he may have become a polygamist. It's hard for me to work it all out. Well, he kills a lot of them, so it's hard. To well, yeah, yeah, it, it's hard. Uh, yeah, he outdid Henry VIII. Hey. One, two, three. One wife, three wife. Five, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven. 
Okay, so now, just in case you're not confused enough, he marries another Mariamne. She wasn't really called the second, but we do that because it's a little confusing. Who, if I've got it right, was the daughter of someone who's going to be appointed high priest. So you have to think what his motives were. One wife, two wives, one wife, two wives. We're up to the third one since he killed one. The fourth one, counting the one he divorced so he could marry the princess. All right, around this time, Alexander and Aristobulus are getting old enough for their higher education, and they go off to Rome to be educated. This time, well, Malthus seems to still be alive, so he must have been a polygamist. Uh, Archelaus is born to Herod. And then, as somebody was noting when we were going over your parts the other day, uh, Herod goes to the island of Lesbos, another one, the more Turkey, but between Greece and Turkey island, and he meets this uh, Marcus Agrippa, who was uh, highly influential, sometimes beside, behind the scenes, uh, Roman almost emperor. So he's hobnobbing again. He marries somebody else named Pallas, and nothing much happens. Oh, in between, notice both of us is named high priest. Huh. So the, the king's brother-in-law's priest. Isn't that interesting? And then Malthus has a son named Antipas. Not to be confused with Antipater. Oh, my goodness. And just in case you don't remember all of your Roman history, Marcus Agrippa marries Julia, who is the sister of Octavian. Who is Octavian? The king of the Caesar. 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 Okay. I remember that one. Caesar Augustus comes and visits Herod in his own territory. That's a big deal. And he throws in some extra territory. And he gives him another title to the whole area. And then, again to confuse you, Herod has another wife named Cleopatra, but not the one you've heard of. I have a quick question. Yeah. Augustus, I thought the Caesar at this time was Octavian. Well, they changed his, Augustus is his title and ends up going by his title. Oh, okay. like the August Caesar. Okay. Because I was, I was thinking, I was like, wait, that's not the Caesar I remember. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, so, now, um, he's got another wife and another son named Philip. By the way, he had another one that just obscured and we don't know what to do about him. <laughs> he is named, I can't remember, Socius A. Amicus Populi Roman. Uh, the A. Amicus Populi Romani is friend of the Romans. It was an official title given to him, friend of the Roman people. And his second trip to Rome is he goes to pick up his boys from college. And evidently on his way back, he writes a will and says Alexander and Aristobulus are his heirs, the not first? their older half brother. Uh, Antipater? Right. I thought that dude was poison. No. Huh. His grandfather. Mm, I got uh, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alexander, it's about time for him to get married. Uh, he marries the daughter of a king of a, a nearby area. Aristobulus marries his cousin Bernice. Herod goes to visit Agrippa again, the, the important Agrippa. And, and he comes back to visit him. Yes. More of that back and forth. Uh, now, you come down to the year 14, and Herod is suspicious of his two sons that he just named his heirs. Of course he is. So he brings his older son back into favor that had been pushed out with his mother. This one's the son. The, son. Uh, the, the grandfather's dead. The grandfather was poisoned. I knew an antipater was poisoned. I just forgot that right, it was the dad. All right. So now the younger uh, son, Antipater. No, no. The older son, Antipater, Antipater, is sent off to Rome with the big wig. Doris is now back in the court, the one that he had divorced, his first one. Now he has a second will and he names the first son his heir. All right, all right. You know, if you keep switching them up, nobody will know who to kill him. 
because then you might not get all the money. Then he goes to Rome for his third trip to Rome to go before Caesar and accuse his middle sons, Alexander and Aristobulus, of plotting against him. Now, remember, Alexander and Aristobulus are in the Jewish royal family, the Hasmoneans. And many people who want Judea to be more Jewish might prefer for the fully Jewish uh, sons of Herod to be king instead of Herod. So he has some reason uh, to, um, to be suspicious. Anyway, evidently they don't get condemned because they all come back together. But in his third will, he says Antipater is important and Alexander and Aristobulus are subject to him. Uh, moving on down to the year 10, he's had enough of these sons. It's been three years, parts of three years since he accused them in Rome. So now he puts them in jail himself. He goes too far and uh, goes into a neighboring kingdom and goes to Caesar, disciplines Herod, and he no longer has the right to name his successor, and he's out of favor with Augustus. So it can, I'm We're at the bottom. checking my work here. One, two, three. All right, yeah. I think so. Again, uh, two columns. You have to go down to the left one first. So he makes his fourth trip to take the younger, son, the youngest son we've looked at, Antipas, to Rome to be educated. There's somebody from Damascus that patches up thing between Herod and Augustus Caesar, and Augustus wants to give some territory to uh, Herod to make up, but. Somebody that his sons married into the family gets in and gets Herod and his son-in-law back together. I have a quick question. Um, how, why was Augustus and Herod mad at each other again? Because Herod invaded the territory south of him without Rome's permission. Oh, okay, and he just... But then when they made up, he wanted to give it to Herod. Uh, that's a nice gesture. There's a, a small incidental thing about the year seven, Jesus Christ is born. Pretty small. Small enough. What is that, case eight, nine, case That's eight, my nine. opinion. I'm not so sure about that oh. date. Um, Aristobulus, in that same year that Jesus is born, if we got the date right, Aristobulus and Alexander are condemned and strangled to death. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> These guys. Oh. Wait, wait, then I gotta find. So we're up just before the year six, and Herod makes a fourth will. Wow. Still keeps Antipater in charge, but says that his son Philip would succeed him, Alexander and Aristobulus having been strangled to death. I thought he didn't, I didn't even know Philip was going to come back in the picture. Yeah, he does. Then Antipater the son starts plotting against his father and trying to push his brother out of the picture so he can secure power for himself. The Pharisees were, you know, the powerful members of the Sanhedrin, and he had Herod had buddied up with them, and he doesn't like them anymore. There's some executions involved. There's always some executions involved <laughs> when it comes to Herod. So Archelaus and Antipas come back from school, and Antipater, takes the will to Rome to try to settle this all up in Rome. So now Antipater is the heir. And another Herod, don't worry about him, is temporarily named. Another one? Herod, son of... Herod. So he's no. the son of who? Herod. Herod, son of Herod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not confusing at all. They don't have senior... Just like, like eight different Antipaters. Uh, okay. Well, it feels like. really like that. So then he breaks off with an important relative, and then when Antipater comes back from Rome saying, I've got the will, I win, he's put on trial and he's put in jail. Herod divorces the second Marianne. Wow, really? 
He makes a new will and Antipas. Antipas is the heir. Antipas comes out on top somehow. Okay. Nobody knows how. Guess what he does next in the year four? Kills Antipas. Antipas. Kills Antipater. Antipater. Oh, I knew he was going to do that. Antipas. His seventh will says that Archelaus, Antipas, and Philip will be his heirs. Then he dies. I mean, like, uh, a month or months after he has Antipater executed, the one he had named to be his heir, then he dies. I have a quick question. So in, was it year five that he was doing all the killing the baby stuff? Uh, could have been his... Yeah, that, that would be a good a guess. Second. But yeah. see, that's why uh, historians don't even challenge yeah. that story. Hey, I think that's... That would, that would be completely believable. Because Herod does crazy stuff like that. They'll that's, tell you about the hoss and the wee I think that's a little messed up. I guess it is. One of them is messed up. One of them. Because it says Joseph is the one who was reported to have his... What line are we looking at? No, it's right. Okay, so I, I Joseph, son of Elam appointed high priest. No, it's definitely not right. Yeah, yeah it is. You start writing there. It's a third of it. It's a whole word. And if we're talking about how... Right, it's because I had it broken up into different charts. Uh, okay. But if it starts at four, it continues on down. And if, it, if it's messed up, we'll okay. show you. I'm not going to, except I want you to know he died in four. I did, that's, that's the one thing to remember about four. And it was at this, virtually the same time he killed his son that he just named his heir. And we can move rather quickly from there. You just need to know, and we'll cover this more, that these three really do inherit his territory. And the three are Antipas, Philip, and the other one, Archelaus. Archelaus. <laughs> no, 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 that's, uh, no, the other one. Oh, and also, okay. uh, Herod's sister inherits some property. <laughs> okay, so from all of this, Wait, well, one more, one more, one more. what do I need to know? In the year six, Archelaus, that's two years after he starts, gets run out. And he was in the head Judea in Jerusalem. He was man. Uh, all of it. Oh. I thought I would put it in, in, a, in an easier way for you to look here. Oh. Can you put that on blackboard? Yes. Yes. At the very bottom, notice that Herod marries into the royal family. That's what I want you to get out of this one. Okay. This guy was a warrior. This guy's the first one to claim the title king. Notice his name. He also was made priest. He was the first one to be priest and king. Herod becomes king. He never becomes priest. But you remember, he names his son after his uncle, who was priest, and he dies. This is the um, this is the family tree that we just went over. They all have like the same name, but um, yes, I'm going to give it to you without the names, and you're going to. Uh, this is your final exam. You're so going to fill in the Harry names. For all of them, you'll at least get a decent. <laughs> <laughs> Better Aristobulus. Yeah. Yeah. What should you remember? Look at this. In this short time. Would you mind if I like wrote it down real quick? You can write it down, but I'm going to put it up on the on the web. I know. Oh, I just write it down. That's fine. All right. So his family starts in 47. Number one son is born. Is born. A couple of years later, his father's Herod's father is um, is poisoned. The next year, he banishes his wife. And, um, and son, and his brother commits suicide. That's not a good start for a family. No wonder he was crazy. To be honest, it's a decent start for where it ended up. <laughs> oh, it's better than it was, yeah. <laughs> So then, he marries into the royal family. He has the title, but he wants you know, the acceptance of the people. And that's when this son, Alexander, is born. <coughs> Shortly after, his teenage brother-in-law high priest drowns in his pool. What? Yeah. You missed that part? <laughs> Wait, his you teenage brother. No, Mary Anne, the wife that he got rid of the first one for, yeah. had a younger brother, a 16-year-old brother, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. he made he named Aristobulus. Who was in council, right? Is he that? was the high priest. Oh, the high priest. Oh, he was right. made the high priest, I knew he was which we can't yeah, yeah. say exactly who appointed him, but 
It was his family connection. Wait, you said, oh, the 16-year-old? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was, he died in a swimming pool. He did. He did. Very shortly after he became high priest. Yeah, that's what, that's what we were, so, that's what we were talking saying. About. So this is where some of the paranoia seems to start. His young brother-in-law, who is of full royal blood I just heard you in, the public, the in the public mm -hmm. uh, opinion, mm -hmm. more worthy of being king for people who follow that kind of thing than Herod is simply by marrying a princess. And Rome has been doing all the appointing, and Rome would have to approve even who gets to be high priest. And even in antiquity, I think 16 years old is kind of young to be the head religion, head of the whole religion, you know. Kind of hard to have some wisdom. Yeah, it's you're probably skinny. dumb enough to swim in your brother-in-law's swimming pool. Get drowned by somebody swimming in somebody, swimming pool. Somebody, I'm not saying. So a few years later, this other one's born. Very shortly after that, he executes the woman that connected him to the royal family. She may become a problem. Oh, and I didn't put in the chart either. And her mother. Okay. Oh. Background. Collateral. I'm sorry, I didn't do that for you. Wow. <laughs> That's the one I wanted you to remember. Oh. That's the one that I was oh. going to put on your test. Oh. What? What? I'm telling you, if you put Antipater and Herod for all of them, you that, will get a good grade. It's like the city of Montgomery, I think. That's, that's Herod's family. <laughs> that's Herod's that's family why, trait. That's why you don't get divorced. It's not what happens to your family. That's kind of then yeah, you make I like the simple one that's like class split. Terrible. split. That was, oh, that was before Herod started getting married. I mean, you go down the right side of Joseph right there. Yeah. And that's what it yeah. See, the reason I put that up is not that I think any of us will ever be able to fill in those blanks. But if that was the poster for the integrity of your of your rulers, that's, that's embarrassing. Right. Where's the one guy? They all had mental problems. Oh, you you couldn't write a soap opera like that and sell it today. People wouldn't believe it. So, oh, oh, there's more here. Oh yeah, he marries all these other people. There's some other people he married. He executes everybody. This is the review part of what we just went over. You said what parts to remember? Pick out the parts next to this ugly chart. Not the chart, but the parts next to it. Okay. So is the PowerPoint going to be up on your... If I don't put it up, send me a nasty email that says, you said you would put that PowerPoint up. Okay. Okay. I'm not good at sending nasty emails. I just remind you. Here is a simpler okay. chart of the heirs of heroin. Okay. okay. This is sort of like... It's a, it's a different one. Player. We didn't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to connect these. Mm. Oh, that one, I like that, that one. That one. That yeah, I can put that one on your test? Yeah. yeah. Wait, I don't know who Dushala is. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't read the book of, uh, of Acts? <laughs> you remember Felix and Drusilla that Paul appears before? No. To be honest, no. not really. <laughs> I've read the book of Acts, but that's not recalling in my brain. Oh, and Herod, uh, you see down there, uh, Herod Agrippa II and his sister Bernice, they also lived oh. as husband and wife. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And Paul appeared before that. them. I remember them too. I don't and then he also that. appeared before the Roman governor Felix, who was married <coughs> to Drusilla. Oh, so now it's all coming back. We're good. I got this. So, what I'm saying is, we're, and we're just about done with Herod, and I know you're glad. I actually like him. He's kind of cool. But having looked at the guts of that system, maybe there's been an improvement in human society since then. Maybe. Maybe, and maybe not. But look the at underlying. Look at our presidents. The oh, underlying humanity of it all. And I, I've had somebody disagree with me, and I, and I like her anyway, but uh, I do not have any loyalty to John McCain. I have respect for him. Did you all hear on the news about the flag on the White House? They pulled it half staff. They, had, they pulled it half staff. Mm -hmm. And you know he's not invited to the funeral. The president isn't. Why? Well, he rejected some yeah. other story. The president, a few hours later, told him, put the flag back up. Then, two veterans groups petitioned the White House, and later the same day, they put it back at half staff. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the personal power and, 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 and the jockeying for power. Oh, how many wives has our president had? Yeah. Well, not wives, but women. 
women. Yeah, but he also had several wives. But there's no standard for them. So they anyway, what I want you to see is, if people had opened their hearts, they would have said, yes, we need a spiritual king. This worldly king is really, really bad. Because he was one of the most successful kings, Herod was. They didn't call him the great because of his morality. But because of his efficiency. He was a good businessman. It is more efficient if you can kill the people who get in your way. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it makes logically. Yeah. Just remember that next time somebody opposes you. Like, <laughs> if a teacher gives you a bad grade, kill it. Oh, you just uh, wait. I don't think you're pulling the drowning pool. I'll just say, this is my teacher's homework. I get told to kill you. <laughs>